you know, for those who understand. So feel free to add on. This is a cipher. This is a cipher. We listen to our, we listen to our pioneers, our elders. We sit at their feet and then we get up and we build on it. That's what we do. My brother, Minister Reginald Muhammad, he told me, when you are blessed to be around these pioneer brothers, he said, you got to treat them like a vending machine. He said, you put your money in it and you get what comes out. He said, whenever you're around them, you ask them a question and stand back and just watch the fireworks and enjoy. He said, don't talk, don't run your mouth, don't feel like you got to add on, have a comment on what they said. He just said, just sit at their feet and listen. Anyway, y'all enjoy. Stacy Adams, Sloan Lego. I was 40, 41, I took a GED test because I was a dropout. Mm. And before I even took the GED test, brother, I was teaching in all them colleges. Confounding the scholars. With the messenger team. How you doing there, sir? When the messenger people speak, everybody shuts up and listen. Not just me. Everybody is attached to the honorable Elijah Mama. He make you suck. Yes, sir. Cause you he might cause you to get the big head if you ain't careful. That's what happened to Malcolm. He thought he was something more than he was. Well, the Envoy Elijah Muhammad, when he was on the run, was going to various cities preaching Islam. And what the Envoy Elijah Muhammad do, he would teach in the big cities at, in the day. And he would stay, in, in this area at least, in the small cities at night. So he would preach in Philadelphia, and then he would stay in Camden when he was first preaching, when he was on the run. Now, he was on the run uh, uh, for for uh, seven and a half years, I believe. So when he was on the run, Camden was one of the cities that he would come to when then he would preach in Philadelphia. Mm, that's and, and ultimately, he just dropped seeds in these big cities and and it galvanized uh, people to come come to Philadelphia. I mean, to come to hear the preaching. I would say Philadelphia, but to come hear the preaching. And many of them were influenced, ultimately, by the nation of Islam. One of the greatest, uh, 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 I guess he played the saxophone, John Coltrane. John Coltrane was affected by the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And that's what brought him to Islam. John Coltrane put out an album called A Love Supreme. Go and look back and look at the, the paper copy of the album A Love Supreme. On the back of that album cover, John Coltrane has Love Supreme dedicated to Allah. This is on the back of the other thing. That was like unheard of at that time. And he was affected by the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. At that time, at, at that, that was Coltrane. Now, many others came after that. You know, Hal Melvin of the, the Blue Notes, all of them uh, was affected by the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Of course, you know, the Delphines, William, we know he came into the nation of Islam. Kenny Gamble uh, was a, uh, got his name from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and was affected by the nation of Islam. So many others came after that, but Coltrane was in the earlier one. But then we had to, in, in fruit class, we had to recite lessons. We didn't sit there, I mean, drill some, but basically we recited lessons. Yeah, and, but the first, the first half of the fruit class, I think it was on a Monday night, still on Monday, we had uh, physical fitness training. Like everybody did karate back then. Everybody was a killer. Everybody. Learned how to punch. Learned how to kick. Everybody. In the second half, we studied lessons. Captain would come out and lay it on us. Doom, 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 doom. And each one is brother so and so, bam. And you have to run your lessons down until you can run them no more. So he would come, sometimes he would have the book open while you recite your lessons. Sometimes he wouldn't. And he would say, Hold it, what'd you say? That's not how to go say it again. Those things were, were going on. Minister Jeremiah was close friends of Muhammad Ali. So all of us, we used to go up to Muhammad Ali's camp. I used to go up to Deer Lake. Uh, to Muhammad Ali's camp. At th that time, we go while he was training. 
I had taken up martial arts. I had been training and uh, teaching martial arts in the FOI class for about five years, thereabout. And then Minister Jeremiah, as I went into ministry, as I went into the years of ministry, Minister Jeremiah said, yeah, it doesn't look like a minister doing martial arts, so you come out and, you know, we don't want you to do martial arts, you just concentrate on your preaching. Oh, wow. So, uh, uh, but because I was doing martial arts, when we go to Muhammad Ali's camp, his wife was a black belt at that time, and Muhammad Ali would have me go to the dojo with his wife while she was uh, doing her her training and I would go to the dojo with her and with the training and then come back to the camp because you know Timothy Drew Noble Drew Ali came before the Honorable Elijah Muhammad started and many of them came over into the nation and they already had that name and since the name was a good name they didn't touch it Timothy Drew he studied he says that we hail from Morocco, divinely prepared by Noble True Ali. Right, see? The life and works of Jesus in India. <laughs> and he calls us Muslims instead of Muslims. Muslim is only an English pronunciation of the word Muslim. I understand there are no O's in the Arabic language. That's why we're Muslims. So the English interpretation is Muslim. Yeah. The streets were going up at that time in riots and on fire and the fact that we didn't riot and we didn't believe in that kind of way of answering the frustrations of our people. We were more disciplined, more orderly. We didn't carry weapons. We were never the aggressor. That was a, a calming element for neighborhoods and streets that were, were rioting almost every year at that time. Uh, this was all during the 60s, you know, during the 60s and riots were, were going on almost every summer. As soon as when the heat came on and everybody was out of school, the streets were on fire. So the Nation of Islam was the, was the culture, the civilized. That's right, we're the black Muslims. That's what they called us and it had a devastating effect on the people, black Muslims, that dog boy. And people thought that there were no Muslims except black people. But the messenger, that was the way they wanted to do it. White people, learned white people knew better. But they did that for the effect that they got. People running from us. Wow. Malcolm used it and he knew better. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us early when I come in, there are white Muslims all over this country and the world. He said they're not biologically your brother and sister, but by virtue of the faith, you have to accept them as your brother and sister. But don't think that they, you know, they, they really uh, physically your brother and sister, because that's not true. They are who they are. But you've got to respect them if they adopt the faith because Islam is not white, it's not black. Islam for, is for everybody who will accept it. Anybody. You see? What about, yeah. Now, when Malcolm broke and he got angry with the messenger, he went to Mecca and came back and he brought that story with him. He had the story before he left. Muslims as white as snow and eyes as blue as blue. I prayed beside Muslims who were white, as anybody of you, and the eyes were blue as the water. Huh? So what he was really saying is, I saw a lie in the messenger's teaching, and I found the truth when I went to Mecca. What he's really doing is building allies, because he knew there were white Muslims before he went to Mecca. But black people didn't know that. So now he brings that story. So that now people say, Elijah lied. That was a trick teaching that he brought. He was very crafty. He conjured up emotionalism in Muslims. You can't play with the emotions of people. And the emotionalists, the emotions of the Muslims were riding high with the way he was talking back at the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But all of it 
all of it was concocted by the devil himself, white folks. They started that ring of emotional lies and deceit among the Muslims and the Christians and Malcolm. They stirred that pot up until it got real juicy. Huh? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that the educated ones would, we would rise overnight with the educated. So we always wanted the educated. So we wanted the brothers from the street because they were at the bottom of society. So we wanted to change their reality. The educated ones at that time were, had education, but they were trying to be separate from the man at, at, at the bottom. So the educated ones were trying to talk white, trying to talk sophisticated, you know, trying to uh, speak above the language of the, of the people. So we had to try to strive to recruit them and let them realize you still have an obligation to your community. So regardless of how intellectually you have arrived, you're still part of the black community and you have an obligation to bring your education back to help with the redemption and the rising of our people. Mm. And so many of them did such. And that's what a lot of them do. I had great respect for Clarence 13. I really did because he had lessons, but he had a problem in the mosque. Malcolm threw him out, but he was a brilliant man. He was, but he was not a follower. He sucked up all the wisdom that he could suck up out the nation of Islam, and then he went off to his own self and called himself the 5% nation. His teaching was not wrong, but he just wasn't a follower. He had to lead somebody. And just like Baraka, Baraka had a good following, and there's people. So the thing really is, to raise the dead and deliver them to the Lamb of God. If he could take this teaching however he gave it to them and make them good people, then that's not really wrong. He just couldn't do it in the face of Malcolm uh, Clarence 13. And maybe Baraka couldn't do it in the face of James. They needed their own space to work. So what I'm saying is, those that James didn't get, Baraka got. Those that Malcolm didn't get, Clarence got, but still they put Islam in their veins, in their spirit, in their heart. So what is that? Raising the dead from a dead level to a living perpendicular. That's why I say I ain't mad at them. People say, well, they wasn't in the nation. Hey, who said they wasn't in the nation? All of us are nation of Islam. Is that right? Every one of us. Man, you got preachers today who have changed the way they preach. They talking some good stuff about that boy. <laughs> yeah. So it was exceptional. I mean, you say, well, how could the man, if, if God didn't teach him, how could a man give you a diet and all of us change, not just some of us, but all of us get shines on our faces. Amen. All of us became starch. All of us became sharper thinkers. All of us, these, these were brothers from the street, many of them school dropouts. Now they are, they're debating intellectuals. What Malcolm was doing is what we were doing on lesser levels uh, to, with, with college guys, with high school guys. I mean, taking an argument with them and defeating them hands down. So there was no way we could not have done it if this man had not been taught by God himself. Minister Jeremiah uh, got Minister Malcolm X's first apartment in Philadelphia. Philadelphia was the first ministry of Malcolm X. Malcolm X, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that signed him to come here to Philadelphia. Malcolm came here in 1954. In 1954, Malcolm came to uh, Philadelphia and he began to preach here. Same time he came to Philadelphia, almost simultaneously, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad then made Malcolm minister over New York as well. So he was shuttled between New York and Philadelphia. Yeah, so Malcolm X came in 54 and he started uh, preaching here. You can find this in a book called the FBI Files, three or four hundred page book. Mm -hmm. And it and the FBI talks about files of when Malcolm came to Philadelphia and when he went to New York. So all of these are factual things that were recorded. Okay. Do we he was always Farrakhan. Yes. 
The messenger told you who he was. Before he left our presence, he told you who he was. Inherit the nation. He's sitting in the messenger's seat by his permission. He told him the seat was his. He rode him by that mouse and said, you know what? I can see you up in there preaching in this mouse, brother. Before he took it. Before he had it. I am, I am so fired up, so pumped, so hyped. I still feel like I'm just coming out of high school, ready to, ready to get it on. I believe this is our day. I believe this is our moment. I believe Minister Farrakhan is the man without question. But the thought in my mind uh, came to me of saying, I've been saying to other uh, historical figures in the nation for years, man, you need to tell your history. You need to, you need to let it be known. It's so much of what you've experienced. And I used to do it with Minister Jeremiah all the time in the latter years, telling him he needed to tell his story. So I said, well, when you invited me to do this, I said, this is really what we need to do in the nation. My wife was saying, I'm prepping your clothes up because I want you to be right. <laughs> so she prepared all my gear up and, and uh, gave me her blessings and called me again this morning after she had went off to MGT class to say, to do my best. Tell you, when you start soldiering, when you, I mean, when you do anything in life, the universe is going to give you what you need. It's like when you start soldiering, coming out to the mosque, get your ex, whatever, the brotherhood going to take care of you. But they're going to watch you, though. They're going to watch you first. They're not going to give you something if you ain't serious. Brother ain't going to give you a pair of shoes, and you're going to fall out in a week. Brother gonna be pissed he gave you his shoes. He could have gave it to a brother that's coming in that's struggling and that, that need them shoes. So they watch you for a while. Shoot, uh, Minister James told me every time I give a brother a suit, he fall out the mosque. So I'm careful who I give a suit to. He told me, he said, I ain't gonna give you a suit. Uh, but I remember though, I remember I was out on the block. I don't know what I was wearing. I might have had on just a white dress shirt at the time and some slacks that I had. Brother, uh, brother out of Willenboro, Philly. Brother Montrese, I want to say. Montrese, I think that was his name. He was a mechanic. Man, bro brother pulled up to the block one day. He had a bag, like four, five suits in it. He said, here you go, fruit. I was out there on the block counting my money. I was selling my final cars. Or my, I just got some bean pies or something. I was counting my money. He said, yo, fruit, don't count your money on the block. He said, it's tacky. Wait till you get home and count your money. He said, it make the people feel like you hustling them. They see you out here counting money. I said, yes, sir. He said, keep your money in your pocket. If you need to count it, step off somewhere and count your money. He said, but count your money when you get home. Make your money while you're on the block. I said, yes, sir. Gave me those suits. Boom, pulled off. Got to the mile. Uh... Captain Kahi gave me a winter coat. Walked right up on my post outside the mine. Slaw leg of fruit. A winter coat in his hand, fresh out the cleaners. I was like, Woo, I'm about to kill him. I'm about to kill him. He said, Thank you for all your hard work, soldier. Uh, now, now I got the long black trench joint. I'm about to kill him. So I'm Minister, Minister Leroy sitting there, he's like, yeah, now I'll take you about $40, $60. Go get you a pair of Stacy's. You can get you a pair of Stacy Adams for about $40, $60. He said, then you be looking like fruit. You be looking like fruit. Man, I got that $40, $60 when he got me a pair of Stacy's. I came back to the mazos on the block like, you, you see it. You know what it is. Fruit. Now you looking like fruit.